Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, video presentation on uh, jobs, uh, specifically um, law enforcement jobs. Um, I know that some of you have been exploring the uh, criminal justice system and this is why you're taking uh, administration of justice or criminal justice courses. And so I thought I would spend a few uh, minutes with you discussing some of the key things you need to look for uh, when it comes to finding jobs in law enforcement. For example, look at your screen. This is the uh, policeone.com uh, website. And uh, here they list uh, job openings throughout the United States. Um, I was a police officer in California, uh, but I know some of you uh, desire to leave California, go outside of California. It's important for you to understand that before you do make such a decision, uh, many of these law enforcement jobs um, outside of California you're always on probation. And uh, what that means is you could be fired whenever a new sheriff or a new police chief comes on board. Um, again, this changes from state to state, for, but from as in California, when you are hired uh, in a law enforcement position, such as I was as a police officer, you are on probation for a, a period of uh, one year to a year and a half. So that's 18 months on probation. Uh, what that means is they can terminate you, they can fire you, from that position with or without cause um, uh, you know, during that time period. Now, once you finish the probationary period, then um, you know, you, they would need to have a reason to fire you or discipline you, and then you have the backing of the police union. So it's important before you decide, hey, I'm tired of California, we have high taxes, I'm gonna move outside of California, that you understand the risk you may be taking is you're giving up your rights uh, as far as protection uh, if you get in trouble as a uh, police officer or a deputy sheriff outside of California in an agency that is not um, go by, you know, you're off probation, now you're a permanent employee and they need to have, uh, uh, you know, a reason to fire you. So look on your screen here, specifically job openings. Um, you look at, see, for example, right here, police officer and the agency that is hiring is uh, New Orleans uh, Police and Justice Foundation. In Louisiana. Now, when you see police officer and then there's nothing next to it, uh, usually doesn't mean anything. Uh, it could mean that they're going to put you through the academy and pay you to go through, um, or you have to actually click on it to find out what they're looking for. The next one below this uh, police officer entry level uh, for the Seattle Police Department uh, entry level means you're coming in, um, maybe they're going to put you through the academy. Maybe they're going to um, pay you while you go through the academy, um, and that's what that means. Uh, now, the one below this, uh, deputy sheriff, um, they're hiring both trainee, which is they probably would pay you to, put, to go through the academy. That's for Orange County Sheriff's Department in Orange County, California, or lateral. And whenever you see the word lateral, that means that you have to be currently working as a full-time police officer uh, most times off probation, which means you have been a police officer longer than 18 months in California before you are considered a lateral. And again, you have to be working full time in that job capacity. Some of the benefits that have, um, you know, came a long way since I was a police officer, uh, you know, which has been, you know, uh, over six years ago, uh, is that um, departments now are uh, so desperate to hire police officers or deputy sheriffs that some of them are allowing you to transfer all of your sick uh, time and all of your vacation benefits and all of your seniority over to that agency when you transfer. It's almost like you become a, um, you know, some type of, uh, you know, professional football player where the recruiters are trying to offer you the best they can, uh, the best, you know, package they can. So anyway, so I want to show you that. And so um, I'm going to show you how you can narrow the search now from, this is all over the United States, uh, but now we're gonna go here to uh, police jobs and law enforcement career job search. And we're gonna click on specifically California. So we're gonna drop down the menu to California. We're gonna search that. And now it's gonna pull up uh, all jobs that are specific for California. And so. Um, we're going to scroll up so you can kind of see what's happening here. So you have a uh, deputy probation officer, Amador County Probation, Jackson, California. You have Kern Community College District. You know, some community colleges have police departments. Um, you ha even have uh, down here um, 
Stanford University Police Department. You know, apparently the uh, deputy sheriff uh, uh, of the of that county um, assigns officers to work for the Stanford Stanford University Police Department. Um, if you're if you're deciding what to do as far as a police officer, you have to kind of look at your setting to see if you would be a good fit. For example, working at a university or community college uh, campus as a police officer, you'd have to be really low profile and non-confrontational. What that means, you're not going to be proactive going out there and pulling people over for rolling stop signs, etc. You are going to be involved in parking enforcement uh, and you know disruptions in the classroom, uh, maybe some students experiencing mental illness, those types of calls. But if you're, uh, say, just not starting out as a police officer or deputy sheriff, you have to consider how you would be a good fit. Uh, if you're young and you have a lot of drive and you want to go out there and solve crimes and get a lot of experience, starting at a community college or university campus is probably not a good idea. At least I would not recommend it. Uh, another thing before we move on is that you have to be willing to move where the opportunity is. And I know that some of you are comfortable where you live and where you were raised and you know the streets and you know how you know where your friends live. However, um, if you're searching for opportunity, um, you have to be willing to go. With new technology, and I've said this before uh, with, in, in, when I teach these classes in the classroom, with new technology out there, um, with GPS and uh, you know Google Maps, uh, you know, etc., um, Waze application, you can now um, start working in a different city that you've never lived in before uh, and uh, easily respond to calls to different addresses that you're not familiar with with, with very much ease. Um, in the past, before GPS and before technology, you had to be pulling out book maps and a lot of times you had to memorize a lot of the streets. But today's technology, when you work as a deputy sheriff or police officer, the computer pretty much, when they send you a call to your car computer, police car computer, you pretty much hit a button and it takes you to the fastest route uh, considering even uh, road blocks and uh, other, you know, road repair work. So anyway, let's continue scrolling through here. Um, I see one that really interests me and that's this one here, City of Coronado, Coronado, California. Uh, they're looking for a police officer, uh, lateral or academy graduates. Now, uh, a recent thing that I found um, you know, when I went through the academy, I put myself through the police academy and paid my way through as an independent, which you can do for a California Community College. Um, it, the process is a, around six months. Uh, my academy was Monday through Friday, eight to five. Uh, however, there are some programs that are modified. For example, San Joaquin Community College in Stockton, California has a, um, a police academy for people who want to work full time, have a family, etc. And so then you would go there three days a week, uh, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, maybe from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. and then some weekends. And then that academy is 10 months long. So there are extended academies. Uh, if you're working full time right now and you're trying to decide on a career change, uh, you know, be aware that uh, you're not stuck to the uh, I have to go every day, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Now, I brought this up on the city of Coronado because a lot of you may not know, but Coronado is actually located in an island uh, off the coast of downtown San Diego and is connected by a bridge. Um, I, my family and I have visited that location many times. It's a, it's a great environment to be and work in. Um, and you can find uh, you know, affordable rooms if you're starting out as a young police officer for rent uh, in the actual island or outside near downtown San Diego or Chula Vista area. Uh, Oceanside is also a nice area to work. Uh, that's the one right below it. Uh, Oceanside's in the north part of San Diego, about uh, 35 minutes north of San Diego along the Highway 5. And so you want to work by the ocean, you want to be a police officer, uh, smell fresh air, get paid while you're doing it, great benefits. Uh, there you are. And then, uh, you know, some of you maybe want to look at other cities, you know, Inland, Truckee, Campbell, um, Police Department in Modesto is hiring. And again, when you look at next to the police officer, if you see lateral, that means uh, you have to be working full time. So if you're not working full time currently, uh, when you're scanning for police officer jobs, you see lateral, 
just continue moving through and then find one that is either academy graduate where they are going to put you through the academy or you've been through the academy or a trainee position. Um, there's also other jobs here. Uh, police dispatcher, that's uh, one of the full-time jobs that I started when I began in law enforcement and police officer is a good way to get you into the, into the uh, law enforcement profession and you learn a lot when you work in the dispatch center. Um, before we close out this video, I wanted to kind of discuss a little bit about deputy sheriff. Um, of course, I was a police officer, never worked as a deputy sheriff, so I am a bit biased um, towards uh, police officers instead of deputy sheriffs. Police officers work for a police chief, and the police chief is appointed um, by the city council. So, um, you know, in terms of if you're working for a large city, uh, you're going to be working as a police officer. Um, there's not that much politics other than different areas that you may work in uh, where there's cliques in communities that they may not want you to do certain proactive enforcement. However, um, one thing you need to recognize if you wish to become a deputy sheriff is that every four years uh, the sheriff is uh, having to run for re-election and so a new sheriff comes on board, uh, a new way of doing things. And so if you're fine with that uh, and also the fact that you're going to be patrolling rural uh, uh, areas out there, unincorporated cities, where your backup may be a long ways away. And uh, when you work in a busy city, you call for backup, but within two minutes, you have uh, five, seven police cars. Uh, when you were a deputy sheriff and you're out there in the country and you call for a backup, you know, backup might be eight to 10 minutes away. And uh, if you're having to fight a suspect, if you're having to, uh, you know, gain control of a situation by yourself, when you work as a deputy sheriff, you're going to have uh, maybe less coverage than you would you would um, working for a police department. Now, I won't say because uh, I know there's some of you that are saying, "Wait a minute, uh, this is not always true." I won't say that this is true in every case. For example, San Francisco County is the same size as San Francisco City. So within San Francisco, for example, um, a deputy sheriff that's working in that county. Uh, is very close to police officers working for San Francisco uh, Police Department. So if a deputy sheriff in San Francisco calls for help, obviously help is going to be there much, much faster. Uh, but what I'm referring to is rural areas where there's only one deputy in a 20-mile, uh, 20-square-mile 20 radius uh, for that area. And so that's what I'm referring to. But again, I know there's exceptions and so forth. So. I'm going to go ahead and end this video um, uh, the, the, right here on the right side where it says top police types jobs. Um, I want you to take note of that before I close this video because uh, it's important for you to know uh, as you're taking these college courses, you know, where are the jobs? For example, if I decide to get into law enforcement uh, in California and Police One accepts um, uh, agencies are always sending them, hey, we're hiring for this. Look at this trend here. The trend right now is there are a ton of police department job openings, uh, civilian. There's, there's you know, high civilian openings. So maybe you don't want to carry a gun. You want to work for civilian type law enforcement jobs. Look at the sheriff's department compared to the police department. Police department is hiring more people. So maybe your focus needs to be where there's more openings. And then at the very bottom here, some of you want to go federal or state. In this website, uh, they only have one federal job in California, three state jobs, and then one highway patrol. So this is something for you to consider when you're searching for a law enforcement job. A few things that I told you today that you can't find uh, you know, in the, on the internet or you can't get immediate information. So I'll go ahead and end the video. Shoot me any questions uh, or concerns to my uh, email and that is adju.mjc at gmail.com, and I will talk to you soon.